What's up everyone, welcome back, it's Kongboy. In this video, I'll be explaining decentralized Web3 social media platforms, why they're the future, and some examples. The first is mirror.xyz, and it's a decentralized blog posting application where the articles are saved and stored permanently on chain and signed by the writers in order to verify legitimacy. So take a look at their website, mirror.xyz. You'll see that they explain some of what it does. And then on the bottom here are the highlighted articles. The first one is on Dark Forest, which I'm gonna make a video on at some point. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you'll notice that there are 29 people that have collected this article as an NFT. So in order to do that, you need to pay 0.005 ETH. And that's the amount that this writer has set um, for this piece, as well as a supply of 10,000. So you could do that by connecting your wallet and then you would have saved a piece of this work. The real reason anyone would pay to collect this article would be to support the writer, not to speculate on the performance or anything like most NFTs are used for. So, uh, and to do that, you would connect your wallet and then switch to the optimistic network, which allows for faster and cheaper transactions since it's a layer two on Ethereum using rollups. So I would just switch and then it's gonna ask me to bridge some ETH over to optimism in order to do the collecting. So you can also subscribe on the top right here and it's gonna ask for email address so that you can get an email anytime that this person posts. So yeah, that's mirror.xyz. Next up is Mask Network, and they are a service for plugins that can be embedded into Web2 and Web3 applications. So most notably, they have a lot of features included on Twitter. And so when you signed in on Twitter and then logged in either with your Mask account or a already existing MetaMask account, for example, then you can click down here and this will pop up. Mask Network offers a variety of these services and one of them is the approval um, check, basically where you see what tokens your wallet has allowed for certain contracts to spend. So you can see here, this is my DGEN wallet. This is not my, my safe wallet, but there's a whole lot here that I've approved. And I'm not worried about any of these really getting exploited because number one, I trust the websites that I've used but also there's, I don't have these tokens anymore. But yeah, so they offered that. You can swap on different chains. You can easily figure out some yield rates for different tokens in DeFi. You can even do tips and a whole lot of other stuff, file services. So they're kind of like a Google Cloud for Web3 where they offer a variety of these services. And they also have the extension up here where you can create a profile like I have here. I haven't done a whole lot, but yeah, that's Mask Network. Oh, I forgot to mention that on Twitter, you can also write encrypted tweets and that's what I've done right here. So I said, just testing out Mask for a YouTube video. Um, and here it says decrypted by Mask. So anyone without the, without the extension would just see that it's encrypted, but in order to see the message, you'd have to get Mask. So it's kind of cool. Only Mask users can see this. Mask Network also lets you check the safety of certain crypto tokens. And so if I take the contract address of Chainlink, for example, which should be a very safe token, we click on the Mask Network, check security, and then they offer support on all of these chains. So you can check tokens for them. Um, and then if I paste the contract and then click search, it says this token has no risky or attention factors. So all good. Chainlink's a great token. And that's how you check. Another important piece of Web3 infrastructure that's going to be helpful in this future social media is Ethereum name service, ENS. And it's basically a decentralized domain name platform where users can link their wallets to this domain name, as well as host uncensorable websites. So the one of many that I own is kongboy.eth and I have my wallet linked to it for easier transfers. You could just type in kongboy.eth instead of my 
having to copy and paste my long address. I've got my YouTube channel linked in there. I've got my bio and some other words, as well as my socials. Um, but you also see I have my avatar, which I'll get to in a second. But this is a very good example of a website that does a lot without being extremely flashy. There's a lot of websites that do essentially the same thing and store information that's inputted by the user on the website, storing it on chain. Um, but here you really just interact with this one page, insert text where you need it, and then it saves it and after you confirm the transaction. But there's other applications that just have absolutely glorified user interfaces without, you know, with, with, with essentially doing the same exact thing on chain. So here, my Kong boy, my baby Kong avatar looks like this. But if you go to my, my um, account, if I look up my ID for my baby, you'll see that there's two versions. One is just the normal image that's stored on IPFS, which is not perfectly decentralized, but it is easy to pull from the blockchain. Um, but the on-chain version is entirely decentralized. So if the IPFS servers, interplanetary file system servers went down, I would still be able to look at my Kong and I would see this picture and it's perfectly decentralized because when you go down to the contract, open it on Etherscan, click contract here, read contract, go down to function number nine, token URI. I'll type 2874, which is the ID for my baby. Um, and then I'll highlight this area. So I'll copy this. I'll go to a new tab and then copy everything in the quotes here. And then if I go to another tab, click enter, there's the baby. So that's one of the most important aspects of your digital identity, your avatar. And that's able to be put on chain like I just showed you here. So ENS lets you use this avatar and have it on your profile where it can be universally accessed and there's no need for you know platforms to sell data because it is all public anyway. Next up is Lens Protocol, and this is made by the creators of Aave, which is a DeFi protocol. But Lens is a decentralized social networking application that has its own uh, domain names similar to ENS. So you can claim your own handle but I've already claimed mine, it's kongboy.lens. And let's take a look at my profile. So I've got my avatar, my banner, um, bio. I'm following six people, no one follows me. If you guys wanna make an account and follow me, please do so. And some of my socials linked down here. Um, but this is just the profile section where you, you know, insert your info, but there are actually applications that are built on top of this network. So a couple examples, Lenster, Favor, uh, Alps Finance, Refract, and some of these. So really anyone can build an application on top of this that, is, that utilizes the profiles in some way. Um, so let's take a look at Lenster. I think I've already made an account on here, so let me log in. Using my Lens profile, just sign a transaction. And here we go. First Web3 social media post. There we go. And it has a GIF attached to it. So this was a transaction that was also recorded on IPFS, so it is stored in a decentralized way. But yeah, there you go. That's one of the apps on Lens Protocol. Okay, this next one is called Zentask and it's made by the founders of the Zen Apes NFTs. I know a couple of the founders and let me show you my profile on that. So you can include your skills, your interests, as well as endorse other people's skills and interests. So you can see here that two of my friends have endorsed my content creation skill which makes sense because I'm doing that right at this moment. And I've included my YouTube experience. I'm in the CyberKongs community. 
I'm trusted by 17 people and trusting 51 people. So got my bio, my location, and my classic Kong boy profile picture. So you can message on here. I've only messaged one person. You can check out the communities on here. Right now there's only three, since like I said, it's in its early stages, but it's trying to be like the Web3 equivalent to LinkedIn, where you can kind of just um, explain your work history, work experience, and connect with others. So Cyber Kongs are part of this, Wolves, and of course the Zen Apes. So the projects themselves can post jobs from here. There's none here yet for them. You can check out the admin team and all the people that are in this community. So this also requires you to verify with your wallet, with the assets in it, just by assigning a transaction. There's no contract or anything that will allow like spending to happen or anything. So I would say a safe application to use. In the world of Web3 social media, the most important aspect of it to be decentralized would be the user's profiles. And that includes their avatars, their username, posts, captions, timestamps. All these things can be recorded on chain and have been, but what's not often on chain is the front end website. So a lot of these websites look really good. They're enticing and very well done, but that aspect is not on chain. But if a website were to be taken down, at least the information could be posted on chain and then publicly available, which also solves the problem of, you know, we've heard it before where the consumer or the users of these applications are the product that is free since their information can be easily sold. But in this case, the information is public. The information that you want to make public is universally available. So there's not really a market for this data. But with all that being said, the on-chain side of things are taken care of API providers like Alchemy, Ceramic Network, Fluence Network. These are all back-end infrastructure systems that allow all this to be possible. That's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll catch you later.